I recently caught my very first redside shiner while fishing in a high mountain lake. I was astonished by the beauty and behavior of these fish, and it inspired me to research them further. In this video, I want to share what I've learned about these remarkable fish, and then share my experience actually fishing for them. This episode is the first of many detailing specific fish species of North America, so if you haven't already subscribed, please make sure to do so. The redside shiner is the small deep-bodied freshwater minnow. In coloration, they are mainly silver and olive, with a bold dark stripe running along the midside from the head to the tail, with a faint lighter stripe just above it. Outside the breeding season, these stripes look muted, but come spring and early summer, these fish burst with color. Breeding males flush bright orange-red on their sides and belly, which contrasts sharply with the darker band. Females also show some color, though it's not intense as the males. This dramatic breeding color is what gives the fish its common name, the red side shiner. Adults measure around 6 to 8 centimeters, or 2 to 3 inches long, though large individuals have been recorded up to 15 centimeters, or up to 6 inches. They are slim and laterally compressed with a pointed snout, large eyes, and a terminal mouth. Unlike some of their carp relatives, they have no barbels near the mouth. Redside shiners are native to western North America. Their historic range extends from British Columbia, south through Idaho, Oregon, Washington, Nevada, Utah, and Wyoming. They are common throughout the Pacific Northwest and parts of Utah and Idaho. These fish prefer cool, clear waters, and you'll find them in headwater creeks, spring-fed streams, slow-flowing rivers, ponds, lakes, and beaver ponds. They often occupy areas with sandy or muddy bottoms and some aquatic vegetation. Redside shiners can well tolerate the cold waters of mountain lakes and streams, but they generally tend to avoid warm, stagnant water. These are a hardy fish and humans have spread them beyond their native range both intentionally and unintentionally. Redside shiners are an excellent bait fish and a common example of introductions outside their native range result from anglers using them as live bait and accidentally introducing them into new waters. In fact, just since the 1930s, they have become established in the upper Colorado River Basin and in much of Montana. In Montana, the Shiner is native to the west of the Continental Divide, but it has since been introduced into many east side rivers, likely via bait buckets. So today the fish's range includes both its broad native range in the west and various non-native waters where it has since been stocked or spread. Fortunately, the red side shiner is not considered at risk and is listed as a species of least concern. That said, wildlife managers do pay attention to red side shiners in non-native areas where the shiners have invaded, as they can threaten sensitive native fish. In some areas where endangered trout or minnows live, officials monitor red side shiner numbers. In extreme cases, if shiners build up in huge numbers, wildlife management may attempt to remove them to protect the native fish and established ecosystems. These fish mature around two to three years of age and are relatively short-lived for a fish. Most live around five to six years, although some individuals have been recorded reaching eight years. They spawn once a year in late spring or early summer, typically May through July, depending on the location. As spring warms, adult shiners often migrate from their lake or stream habitats into shallower tributary streams or riffles to spawn. These are social fish and will usually be seen in large schools with sometimes hundreds or even thousands of individuals. Ecologically, the red side shiner plays a dual role. In its native habitat, it is an important forage fish, serving as prey for larger game fish and wildlife. On the flip side, red side shiners are efficient predators of small prey. Young shiners consume plankton, while adults actively feed on aquatic insects, insect larvae, small crustaceans, snails, and fish eggs. They even hunt small fish fry when they get big enough, making them both predator and prey within the same ecosystem. This type of fish can be very beneficial to lakes and streams as this balance helps support a diverse food web. From an angling perspective, red side shiners are interesting mainly as a bait fish, as they are too small to be conveniently consumed or sought after as a major sport fish. However, this doesn't mean that they can't be caught and targeted by anglers. In fact, fly fishermen sometimes target red side shiners as a challenging catch. There are even tiny flies that you can use to target shiners, and if you're lucky, you might just land a 5 or 6 inch trophy. 
I now want to share my experience catching my first red side shiner. To do this, I chose to go to a reservoir that actually has an issue with an overpopulation of the shiners, where the state has started to use efforts of population control. Wow, they're kind of bigger than I expected, getting them out of the water like that. Look at that. So that's the hook that I'm using for these guys. It is absolutely tiny, tiny. I think it's like 0.3. <laughs> These were like special ordered from Japan. I had a friend give them to me. One thing that I noticed while targeting these little fish was that they seemed to rely heavily on sight and would go crazy over movement. If I moved my bait quickly through the center of the water column, it would entice many strikes. However, if I just let my bait sit on the bottom without any movement, it took them a relatively long time to find. I was surprised how aggressive these little fish were. In fact, as I cast a bigger spinner for trout, I would still get a bunch of shiners attempting to strike my lure. If you find yourself targeting these little fish, one important thing to know is that since they have very good eyesight, they tend to chase visible prey like mayfly nymphs or mosquito larvae which may help you in choosing what fly or tiny lure you decide to use. All right, I'm gonna pull this first trap and see if we've got anything. Oh, there's definitely some fish in there. Sweet. Check that out. Nice bait fish right there. All right. Wow, these fish are so pretty. See, just look at that. So pretty. I hope you enjoyed learning about this fish as much as I did. Please comment below on which fish species you'd like to see me cover and then go out and catch in a future episode. Thanks, and I hope to see you on the next one.